Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I am gonna interrupt your regular programming with some chat about Log4j exploit. So let's get started. Now I don't normally talk about network security stuff on this channel, but this is big enough to get some of yours attention because this exploit is pretty dangerous. The first time I heard about it was from this YouTuber, which I'll leave a link to his video down in the description below, where he was actually able to perform this exploit on a Minecraft server using the text box. And this exploit allows you to remote execute programs, which is very dangerous. It's found in Log4j of any Java application. So if you are running Java with Log4j and it's version 2.15 and below, you are acceptable to this exploit. Now, what this really does is basically Log4j is is for developers. You log all the stuff on the program and then they can go back to de debug the program or diagnose the program if there is any. So the log4j is very important and it's mostly active in most Java's and Apache servers. So yeah, it's, it's, it's basically all around. The actual exploit itself is actually very easy to perform. You just need this 12 character code and when you inject this code, it will activate a connection to the server then you are allowed to do whatever you need to do. So it could reverse shell back into a web host, which will send another class file to activate the program. So in his case on that video, he I think he used it as a calculator. He was able to perform this exploit and kick in the calculator on the Windows machine, which yes, the calculator itself sounds pretty harmless now, but if you were to change that up instead of using, uh, starting a calculator up and start a virus or download a virus from an internet source without anybody knowing, now that becomes extremely dangerous. Again, this is anything that's basically Java and there is a lot of appliances that still use Java, like a lot of Cisco products, uh, Fortinet, uh, manage engine products, they all use Java and until they patch up everything or by now they should have, but until they patch up everything or create a fix for it, there are a couple of ways to prevent against it. So first, if you have anything internet facing uh, services like what we've been doing with the Pi hosted series, uh, try to lock it down. Only allow the IPs that you know are safe to disable anything that's um, logged for J. Um, that will prevent them from being able to execute that code. And in this 12 string character code, it actually uses JPNL, which is another class file inside the log4j. So if you're able to delete that class file or not use it at all, then that's another way to prevent it before you are able to update um, your software. So just be very mindful on what you need to do. And also, like I said, upgrade your Java, upgrade your software. You need log4j version 2.15 and above. My biggest worry about this whole thing is not really the big manufacturers of upgrading and stuff like that. Uh, my biggest worry is like the older software that you're using that still uses Java, they might be abandoned and maybe they won't have an update. So you might have to do the workarounds that we are just talking about, which is disable log4j or disable JPNL. My second worry is that because this is a zero day, that means it's been in production. This, this exploit has been used God knows how long, could be months, could be a year before we discovered it. So any big company might have been acceptable to this bug already, which we have no idea of who or when it started happening. So those are my two things. So if you are um, very nervous about this, uh, change all your passwords to your online accounts and everything as well. Now, I am going to show you two websites right here. Uh, one is actually how to check your Linux server. So if you're running Pi hosted or Raspberry Pi or something like that, you could actually run this log4j checker. And this will do a very basic uh, check to see if it's running Java. And if it does run Java, it'll try to see if it could run anything that's uh, log4j. So it'll scan for like this, log4j occurrences, uh, check for packages for log4j in, in Elasticsearch. Uh, Java is installed, it'll, it'll do all that stuff. So basically, if I was to go into my prompt, copy this, and again, it's not always safe to just copy from the website, but I've tested this a few times already, so I know it's safe. Copy and paste this. It'll actually run the code and search if there is anything that has log4j or anything. So right here, analyzing jar, Warning, opt, resolve, resolve, DaVinci resolve. Proton.jar contains log4j files. So 
that already tells me that there is some log4j in here and it needs to be updated so i'll have to grab the latest updates from davinci resolve to get that fixed and that's what the software does two if you're not able to upgrade the program that you are using uh, you might be able to play around with this this is the github to perform the log4j exploit it is so easy and tells you like this uh, jndi I keep saying JNPL, but it's JNDI LDAP. So this little string is what can perform that hack, that exploit. And it's so simple to use. There's so many script kitties out there that basically could perform this in like matters of seconds. That's how simple this exploit is. But yeah, you're, you could actually take a look at this little git. I'll leave a link to this one as well. And see if you could perform this on the program that you have to see if it's exploitable something that's not upgradable so you know if you're fixing something or disabling log4j or disabling um, jndi uh, that it worked or not by using this exploit and this whole thing actually goes down the whole list of running the actual exploit on the server and having a little code that allows you to kick open i think a notepad on this so this little bit of code is pretty intense if you want to play around with it but again use it at your own risk and on your own software not on anybody else just fair warning this will this is the actual exploit itself anyway i will leave a link to both these websites down in the description below i did perform this little hack uh, log4j pwn on my own minecraft server on an older version of java and it went in without a hitch so it does work also, use the log4j checker for any Linux machines just to make sure that you are protected. And obviously, if you saw from just this video here, I am not protected because of my resolve. But my resolve is not public facing, so that should be fine. Well, just be careful out there. This is a really big exploit. So if you have anything that's publicly facing, make sure you take care of it and uh, follow the guidelines on what you need to do to fix all that stuff. That is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.